right, it is time to work through an example problem. So we're giving you velocity here. This is the velocity vector, so the first derivative. This is the dx dt component here and the dy dt component here. And they're telling us if the object was originally at the origin, that's the point 0, 0, as we know, when time equals 1, find the following at time equals 4. You may use your calculators, but show your setup. So speed, if you recall, is the formula the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. So the setup is just the square root of, this already is dx dt, so the square root of rad t squared, and then this is dy dt, so 3t squared plus 1 over 2t squared, all squared. I just have to evaluate that in my calculator such that time equals 4, I will let you plug that into your calculator. Please do so to make sure you get the correct answer. It is 48.073. Next problem. We brought forward the velocity vector from the prior page, just so it's easy to see. The acceleration at time equals four. Well, the first thing we have to do is get the acceleration vector. And we do that by differentiating each component of the velocity vector. As you know, the square root of t differentiates to 1 over 2 times the square root of t. And then we can use the power rule here. 3t squared goes to 6t. And then actually, um, 1 over 2t squared is going to go to negative 1 half times a negative 2 times t to the negative 3. So what I did was I left that coefficient of 1 half out in front. I brought down. Um, the negative 2, and I'm realizing I made a mistake, so bear with me here. It's plus, because I put my minus here. So that is, I bring down the negative 2, which is here, drop a degree to negative 3, leave the coefficient of 1 half out in front. So my, my acceleration vector is 1 over 2 rad t, comma, 6t, and then 1 half times negative 2 is negative 1 over t cubed. I now need to evaluate the acceleration vector at t equals 4. I don't really need a calculator for this, so I won't use one. If I plug in t equals 4, I get out 1 over 2 times 2. So 1 fourth is the, the second derivative of acceleration, the second derivative of position, or the acceleration at 4. And then plugging in 4 here, I get out 24 minus 1 over 64, and I can just leave it like that. I can simplify it to 23 and 63 64 if I want to, but I don't have to. So this is acceleration at 4. Now position requires me to integrate, and so what I do to integrate is I get position by integrating each component separately. So the first component was the square root of t. When I integrate that, I get 2 thirds t to the 3 halves plus a c sub 1 value, because remember, we're going to have a different constant of integration for each component. And then when I integrate this one on the y side, I get t cubed, and then I'm going to have minus, because my, net, my exponent of negative 2 goes up a degree to negative 1, and I divide by negative 1, so minus 1 over 2t, and can't put the closure of my brackets yet because I'm going to need a different constant of integration. I'll call it c sub 2. So now I need to solve for my constants of integration. And if you recall, what they told us was that when t equals 0, my, excuse me, they told us when t equals 1. Let me get this right. They said at t equals 1, the position is at the origin. So s of 0 equals the origin. Excuse me, t s of 1. I'm having trouble remembering they didn't give me an initial time of 0. So s of 1, the position function, is at the origin. So now I need to solve for my constants of integration. The way to do that is just plug in t equals 1 into here. So I'm going to get 2 thirds plus c sub 1 equals 0 which means my c sub 1 value is going to be negative 2 thirds. So I can go ahead and erase the c sub 1, and I'm going to plug in a negative 2 thirds right there. For my c sub 2, I'm going to plug in t equals 1 into my position equation for the y side, and that's going to give me 
1 minus 1 half plus c sub 2 equals 0, again, because the initial point is at the origin. So this gives me 1 half plus c sub 2 equals 0, which tells me that my c value is going to be a negative 1 half. So I'm going to place that in here. So this is my position function, or my position uh, vector. It's not a function, it's a vector. So now, to complete my work, what I need to do is evaluate my position vector at 4. So if I plug in t equals 4, I have to square root 4 and then cube it. So I get 8 times 2 thirds is 16 thirds, minus 2 thirds is 14 thirds. And then here, if I plug in t equals 4, I get 64 minus 1 eighth minus 1 half. And I'm not going to simplify that. I'm just going to leave it just like it is. And then next question about the same problem says, when is the object at rest? Well, the object at rest, this is critical that you understand this. The object at rest is at rest when both dx dt and dy dt equals zero. They separately have to equal zero. So what we're going to do is take our um, dx dt, which was, if I recall correctly, rad t. Where does that equal zero? Well, that equals zero when time equals zero. Separately, I need dy dt to equal zero. So that's 3t squared plus 1 over 2t squared must equal zero. So let's go ahead and solve this to get 3t squared equals negative 1 over 2t squared. It's, uh, yeah, that's right. And then I cross multiply to get, let's see, 6t to the fourth equals negative 1. Well, as you know, when I raise something to an even exponent, I cannot get out a negative number. So this never happens. Therefore, while the horizontal motion of our particle is zero, at time equals zero, the particle is always moving up and down. There is never a point or never a time when the object is not moving up and down. And so the answer to this question is never. This object is always in some sort of motion. Last problem on this whole lesson says, find the total distance traveled by the object on the interval from one to four. So we need to use our distance formula. So we integrate from one to four, the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. There's a dt out there. So this will be a calculator problem. We just can sub in for dx dt. We'll sub in the square root of t. So that's just going to be t because the square root of t squared is t. And then for dy dt, we have 3t squared plus 1 over 2t squared when we're squaring that. And you're going to plug this into your calculator. Please do not try to do this by hand, and please do make sure you put it into your calculator to make sure you get out 63.598. And that does it for the first day of parametrics and vectors.